Well, that's what we're looking at right now. We're looking at uh, the current battle that the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress is facing within his party. Uh, only just about today ago, um, a day or two days ago, uh, a group of protesters were in front of the National Secretariat of the APC uh, calling for the sack of the chairman. When his response and that of his team was sought, he said he wasn't going to respond uh, to faceless groups. But we have here this morning with us Mr. Patrick Ikareli, who is a member of the All Progressives Congress and a former chairman, House Committee on Power. Honorable, you're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you so much, Mark. It's my pleasure to be here with you this morning. So what precisely is the situation right now? It would seem that this battle uh, against the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress is not going to come to an end. It seems to be getting uh, heated by the day. What exactly is your reading of the situation? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the, it is obvious to anybody that wants to really get to the fact of the matter. Like you just said in your, during your intro, that the national chairman did say that the protests you made reference to are faceless people. Faceless in the sense, I think I, I, I agree with him to a very large extent because I was privileged to watch a video clip of the protesters you just mentioned now and um, read in the papers also the interview of who, the man who, I think his name is Yunusa Amandu Yusuf or something like that, who led the protest. In the course of his um, responding to your questions, he gave out himself. I will say without fear of contradiction that most of these protests you are seeing are actually being organized by people that are not even related to APC, or you can call them fifth columnists of some sorts. The man that led that protest yesterday did mention, it's on record, that he was once an APC member and that he has since left APC with his group before the 2019 elections. A man that has left the PC with his group coming in front of the secretariat with some, you know, people I don't, for want of better words, who you, you, if you watch the video, you can better describe them in your own words. It's, that is just a deliberate attempt to create, um, you know, make people feel that the national chairman is being embattled. It's not coming from genuine or people that you would call uh, authentic or ideal APC members. But isn't he being in battle? I mean, this battle started before the 2019 elections. In fact, perhaps started very clearly during the primaries of, the 20, of 2018 yeah. uh, towards the 2019 elections. Then he must have made some enemies, uh, at least political enemies, which some people might think, you know, might not have forgiven him. Uh, when you consider what happened in the primaries of yes. Imo, which uh, is still somehow in court, uh, the, the primaries of Ogun, primaries of Zampara, and um, I think even that of Rivers as well. Uh, all of that seemed to have set the plane. And then when you now consider what is happening in Edo State, uh, which claims, the party there claims that they have suspended uh, the national chairman of the party. Doesn't it paint a, very, a, a picture that shows that perhaps all is not well? In fact, all is not well within the rank and file of the APC. <coughs> Anyway, thank you very much. The truth of the matter is like, I, like it's often said in our local parlance, um, it is a tree that bears fruit that you expect people to, you know, either climb to pluck or throw stone at. That is just a reality in relation to politics. Let's take you back to what you just said from the, you said by, I mean, Your Rivers. Yes. No, no, you mentioned Rivers, the, two, the first state you mentioned, mm -hmm. Zamfara, mm -hmm. uh, Ogun, and the likes. We have discussed these things sufficiently. And if known that people have vested interests, which is that they are outside the party wanting to, you know, make the world believe so satisfy their own personal, uh, you know, tastes of what all this should look like, which is not ideal, this matter ought to be laid to rest by now. But so long you have people that, even people that have, if you like, quote unquote, congenital issues that came from their mother's womb, they came from the womb with. They today want to attribute it to the person of Adam Sushimole. The reverse case you mentioned, we all know how the genesis of that case and how it played out. It was an issue that bordered on personality clash between the Minister of World, I mean, uh, Transport and Senator, uh, what's his name now? Magnus, Magnus Abbey. You go to Zamfara, it was a problem that had to do with the state's you know, party leadership that nobody, of course, it, we have said it's time to start number. That the first problem we have is that governors should know that 
They became governor on a platform of a political party. I'm going to ask you to pause your thoughts okay. there. We'll let you finish them when we come back from this break. Please stay with us. Honorable Patrick Kikarelli is still with us here. He's a member of the APC and the former chairman, House Committee on Power. But just before we went on break, you were trying to make a point. Yeah, the point I was making clearly is that the issues, the foundation you laid, mm -hmm. the four states you made reference to, we have since uh, exhausted and have been discussed sufficiently in different fora. Mm -hmm. And to the understanding that the national chairman really didn't have any blame in what happened in those states. Rather, they were issues that were localized. And that is his, the problem he has with so many people because when he insists on getting the right thing done, some governors will want to say they are the chief executive of the respective states and that what they say must be law. And of course, one must be ready for the probable consequences of his actions or inaction at one point or the other. What happened is that the Supreme Court judgment was very clear we to the, was to the fact that there was nothing that the, 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 the Zavar State did not fulfill the requirements of the electoral uh, position and the constitutional provision that borders on, you know, organizing the primaries as it were. Well, this so particular that, yes. group that, that protested just yesterday, yesterday yes. uh, their growls is that Bayelsa has been lost as well and they believe that it is the fault of the national chairman. That is most ridiculous. How is it, it ridiculous? It is absolutely ridiculous. How what is that ridiculous? What when you look at the checks, I mean, yes. when a number of people have also said that, you know, internal checks within the APC seem to yes. be very weak, and that's why such a matter would have come forward. Fine. It is an attempt. Oshomole's problems of seeing quote unquote today is the fact that he has tried to stick to the rules of the game, which, and that has been the problem he has got with so many people. And those who saw this with him have come back to thank him for, for standing, you know, the grounds he stood. Otherwise, we would have suffered the fate we suffered in Zamfara in so many other states. And, of course, we are supposed to be thanking him for bringing discipline and sanity. His offense today is that he's a man of principle, a man who believes in the you know, sanctity of what the democratic ethos and values and principles should be. He is one of the, those who propagated the issue of one man, one vote. We saw him you know, into the state house of those states, and he did so well. He didn't come to the national as a national chairman on a platter of gold. It was based on his antecedent and his capacity to lead the people and governize the people and lead them to, you know, a desired destination. It doesn't, answer, it doesn't answer the question of internal checks within the agency. No, wait a minute. The internal checks I just told you mm -hmm. is that the way you talk, you just make sure that people are, are alleging that the, the leadership of the National uh, Party of the APC is weak and that was what led to what happened in Bayesa. How do you, what is the link? What is the nexus between the national chairman and the the screening committee, as it were, if that is the issue, I guess what we are talking about is the, what led to the disqualification of, you know, the, I mean, the, uh, the governor and the governor, I mean, governor-elect, mm -hmm. who was to be sworn in, on grounds of the fact that his deputy, uh, the court, the Supreme Court said the, the papers were deficient by way of, you know, uh, you know, all sorts of names coming up in the academic uh, qualifications. Shouldn't that have been spotted internally? Who, that's... If it should be spotted internally, look at the history of that. The, the, the very gentleman in question we're talking about here, I was, we know, this is a, um, a serving senator or a one-time senator. The screening committee, I'm not aware, I, don't, I, I know as a matter of fact that the national chairman was not sitting on the screening committee. People, there's what you call delegation of power. People have responsibility within the ongas of the party whose job they should do. So they did their job and, and you know, cleared him. But mm -hmm. if by... What happened ultimately? Mm -hmm. We did, nobody, you know, I, we saw it coming. And your question now may be, the screening committee, should they have seen that this man's uh, papers were not correct or what have you? But that is a question that can be answered in so many ways, depending on the side of the divide you are in. If, you, if the Supreme Court were not what it is, having classified itself by their own definition, that is the final, and that makes them infallible, and the infallibility is not because they are not infallible, they are infallible because they are final. And of course, we are seeing a situation today where the decision of the Supreme Court is being revisited and, you know, for maybe evaluation or reassessment. So if the Supreme Court, for any reason, without being immodest, choose to say anything contrary, will these same people come back to say that uh, this national chairman should be, should be crucified? And I say with all sense of humility and responsibility that nobody has told me, and I have never seen it anywhere, that to say that in the course of this screening that the national chairman was, at, was, right, was there who screened and passed the, the governor and the deputy governor 
So they have feelings of community. other members of the party? Of course. It's, it's, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that you people are looking for how to give a dog a bad name so that they can hang it. Okay, I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts. Yes. Let's quickly flip over to Lagos so where we have another guest, Jim Milling. Well, yes, indeed. We've got um, Mr. Paul Ohambamo here with us. He is a Commissioner for Information in Edo State. Thank you for coming out this morning. Thank you very much. So you heard uh, Honorable Patrick Ikarali there. So uh, are you part of the group trying to give the governor a bad, uh, the chairman of the party, a bad name in order to hang him? No, no I don't think it's the issue of a bad name now. What is in a name? If uh, the sweet smelly rose still bears the same name, even we, when called another name. So what it's is not, this name? The, this, the, the issue here, my problem with some of our APC people is that we deny the truth and we try to evade reality. What is the truth? Let me look. We try to evade reality. You have said people who protested are faceless and that even if you dismiss them as being faceless and you dismiss the messenger, what is about the message? What we are talking here, these people came out after Bayesa issue. If you look at paragraph five of the Supreme Court judgment, it said it is APC is deemed not to have feeded candidates. And you are telling me people should not react and ask questions. How is that the fault of the national chairman? Excuse me. When you want to buy a property, let me bring this analogy. When you want to buy a property, as a responsible person, you apply a reasonable man's test by checking, doing investigation to know the root of title. All this to know if it is incubated. And if you don't do that, invariably you are buying a lawsuit if eventually it is incubated. People are contesting. The question now, were they not screened? If you have to screen, you say the delegated you know, powers. But the national chairman is the national chairman for all practical purposes. The fear now, I'm coming okay. When you sacrifice the politics of merit and those of cause and effect on the altar of luck and good omen, this is what you get. Every action has correlation with results. Look, Mr. One, one moment. The, there was a screening committee, right? Yes. And that screening committee came up with this list that produced the governor, the governorship candidate, and the deputy governorship candidate. Right? The, the one, one moment. One moment. Screening committee. What he said now? Are, are you taking one, that one? One moment. One moment. Sense. So, the screening committee comes with a result and says this is the result. If the chairman, if the national chairman comes and overrules them, wouldn't you say that's anti-party? But if he had overruled them, and the result today we have by yes, sir. How will you have viewed it? Would, would you say that would have been right if he had overruled the committee that the party set up? But who takes the blame now? Where is the committee? No, but is you haven't answered the question. You Should the chairman have overruled yeah. that committee? But the, the fact that he said chairman did not screen, I cannot take that from him. The chairman but, screened governors. No, you didn't. Governors. It was the national chairman part of the screening committee. Yes. Because when members of the House of Reps uh, those uh, aspirants, I mean candidates for House of Reps, Senate, when they were at the Ladi Kuali Hall, waiting, complaining that they were being delayed, people came and told them that the chairman, national chairman, was screening governorship candidates. So, so this is why, you, when, when you have, I'm coming, sir. Sorry, you said people came and said And that told them, he, yes. Okay, so you're saying authoritatively that yes. the national chairman of the APC was a member of the screening committee for the Bayelsa governorship, governorship Gov candidates. When you talk governorship, it's for all practical purposes. Governorship, when that one came. And in any case, let us look at it because we are approaching the Edo election. This is why uh, this apprehension and fear is genuine. So this is what this is about? The Edo uh, so that so elections. that so that APC in Edo being the only state APC state in South South now so that APC in Edo does not take a long sleep before sunset. This is the fear. This is the fear. Because Supreme Court has simply punished arrogance. Supreme Court has punished impunity, recklessness, ego, and insular pursuits. This is what has just happened. And I don't see, even when the Supreme Court want to revisit it, I don't see them touching the kernel of the matter. Mm. So now say APC has candidates. That is the kernel of the matter. If the issue has to do with, oh, uh, the name of this person is wrongly spelled, not going to the root of the matter, the, 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 the cancer is not cancer, this is this. These are different things. 
So, if... a consequential order was given by the Supreme Court that INEC should withdraw and give to the second highest person. But people are saying it should have been, you know, uh, the Supreme Court should have issued, I mean, ordered fresh uh, election. I said no. That they are relying on Section 142 of the Electoral Act, which has long been nullified, rendered null and void, right. and, has, and has been set aside by the Federal High Court, mm. and even affirmed by the court of, court of Appeal sitting in Sokoto. So, seeing all this on ground now, what are you proposing mm. as a solution, as it were? What is your proposal? What are you bringing to the table? And how do you feel this will change what is on ground presently? What, what, I'm, saying, what I'm telling you now is that we should hurry slowly in doing this. If your hand causes you to sin, cut off the hand. It's better you go to, you know, heaven without a hand than go to hell with complete hands. Wait. Can can you bring that to what you I'm know, saying now? Real is or one hand test or transits from national chairman should be reduced. For example, Supreme Court sat and gave decision. That decision by that it become focus of issue. I heard national chairman saying the person will not be sworn in, and the person has been sworn in. Mm. And that ridicule, you will need more than enough soap and sponge to rub to wash up the rubbish. So these are issues we should we should know when to apply brakes when talking. So this is just about the statements which you say are unwarranted from the national chairman. That's all. If that is sorted, you're fine. Mm. Then if it's sorted, then you also have to, like in a do, vested interest. The chairman, huh. of course has its own interest. All the people, excuse me, all the people that have come out to contest with the incumbent governor, I have called them negative alternatives. Because they are the same people. <laughs> because they are contesting against the government. No, 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 no. Because of history. History, the judgment of history okay. is not subjective and cannot be rigged. Speaking about utterances, yes. you want the national chairman to watch his utterances. How about the governor? Because there are the clips governor, and videos of him saying certain things and threatening. The governor, the governor had been so you know, driven to a desperate solution that he now prefers independence with war to servitude with peace. That is the problem. So that means his statement is threatening that if there any... Maybe no, no. I think that the, statement was the directed to the is for, The threat is for unruly people. When Alexander Pope advised... I, I mean, Aristotle advised Alexander Pope, Alexander the Great. He said, be a leader to the Greeks and a despot to the barbarians. God in Obaseki is a leader to the true and law abiding Edo people. But obviously, a despot to the unruly people, those who want to take Edo backwards. Because for, for the story of Obaseki today is that of you know, a faithful past and an expectant future. So you, can, you excuse the governor's comments that he would deal with the national chairman if he should do anything? No, national chairman. He said anybody. No, he mentioned a specific name. Yes. He mentioned the name of the national chairman. Specifically, so you excuse that. But he's a governor and he's the chief security officer. So he has a right power, to say it. No, I'm coming. His powers must not be undermined. This is the problem. And on, unless and until we cure this, it's an first group uh, issue. Before going to the why issue, the, uh, 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 Oshomole was governor in Edo State. Mm -hmm. And a fraction of what he's giving to Obaseki, no one dare it. You cannot. Who are you to face Oshomole as a governor and talk to him? You, unless yeah. you are written your will. Mm. Excuse me, please. Mm. Go ahead. You, you please. cannot dare it. Mm. But this time, for somebody fighting back to say, I want to be a governor in office and in power. Give me back my powers. If you quarrel, then you quarrel with the man who took those powers from him in the first place. So this problem, I, I'm happy with the reconciliation, uh, reconciliation committee set up, the 12 marigold, to resolve all this. Mm. Because ordinarily, I can tell my friend there, the people who want Obaseki, they, don't, they are not saying he has not performed, or that they, do, they will defeat him in primaries. They say the national chairman is the one that will take the name to INEC. We are going back to what we are saying. Mm. He's the one that will take the name, not minding the repercussion the what will result from such action right. is the one that will take the name to INE and Obasebi will, will be driven out of the place. So these are the issues. So, so, so you ask any of them, in which area of human endeavor can any of them excel Obaseki, just as the musician excels both of them right. in the field of music. So on a final, just to be clear now, we saw the protesters calling yes. for the removal of the national chairman on Monday, Tuesday. 
Are you in support of that call or what, what exactly do you want? No, the issue of removal, the issue of removal of uh, the, the, the national is something that virtually everyone has said because the issue is no longer severe. This crisis is becoming critical. And when it's getting to the airstream like that, you hear, it's not, you know, a cacophony of voices. Is that what voices, you also want? Is that what you want also? Unless the national chairman, you know, would be above board. Eh? and tell Nigerians that now I want to be a national chairman for all persons and I want to do what is needful by not sacrificing the qualities of merit and those of course and effect on the altar mm. of luck and good omen. So you but want reconciliation? I want, yes, reconciliation, yes. Otherwise, they will be at the receiving end. This battle would have ended without a negotiation. You don't think the governor be, can it, lose it, the governorship ticket? Excuse me. It would have been a surrender. Losing the governor, you know, a governorship ticket when the people are with him. That is one advantage Obaseki has. An advantage, of course, a better soldier than rashness. That is one advantage. All the right. people are with him. They are happy because of the, you know, projects he, he has been executing. They will tell you he has not done anything. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Mr. You, <laughs> let's find out what they'll tell us. <laughs> but we well, thank you for coming on this morning. Mr. Paul Hobam is the Commissioner for Information in Edo State. Mark, where? Well, this is not only the APC in Edo State. Well, not just the APC. I mean, I mean this, this time around, I think it's the governor, the deputy governor more specifically, who submitted a petition to the IGP asking that the national chairman of the APC be arrested. The PDP is also asking that he be arrested as well, especially on his utterances in Bielsa, which they feel fueled uh, violence uh, after the Supreme Court judgment. What's your take on that? Do you think that the chairman, the national chairman, should have been in a hurry to issue the statement that he issued, saying that no one will be sworn in because uh, they didn't meet, they didn't meet two thirds of the of the of the vote, which was read wrongly. That was not how Einek eventually interpreted it. Yeah, you're talking about Einek interpretation and uh, the national chairman's interpretation as it's a human being and is entitled to you know uh, his opinion based on his understanding and evaluation which was the understanding of so many people who read that judgment mm -hmm. um, if one contend that there was no you know to talk was not met and it's a, it's a part of the constitutional provision which says that you i mean not uh, you must have 25 percent into thought of the number of local government that makes up a state because you are not um, going to be a governor for a section, it's a governor for the entire state. If reading that aspect of the constitution and indeed the, uh, what the outcome of the Bayesa election was short, was, I mean, uh, was short of that, it could not be said to be a criminal statement to have been made by the national chairman. It was a hurried statement. What two, it? It, as a national chairman, at the heat of passion, at, that, at the point that judgment came, he needed to do something or say something to pacify, to calm nerves, frayed nerves of party members. And that, I mean, whatever it is, that, they are, of course, where are we headed to? I, have, have we not got, we're in court today for that. So, the, it is, it is it, you know, good money can be offensive de depending on the way it is put. And the person that is listening to it as well. Just like you heard the, my, my friend from the Lagos studio just now, he was saying that, you know, is that Abbasaki as a governor can do anything he likes, utter ego. But let me say clearly that it's, it would appear to me clearly now that Shakespeare saw this day coming, where he said, it is safer to be that which you destroy than by destruction you do any death for joy. That is exactly what is playing out in Edo State today. Mm -hmm. If my friend, he once came, went on a national television, specifically Silverberg television, to tell them that the outcome of the primaries in Edo State was, you know, uh, it, it was the highest bidder that got, you know, the, 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 the results or uh, winning position in the primaries of Edo State. That was most reckless and unfortunate statement to, 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 in relation to what really happened. And what are we saying today? I the wish... genesis of Edo State problem that he's saying today, whether he needs a condition or not, started from the fact that we undermine, the government of the state undermine the fundamental Honorable... fixes, provisions, and the practice of democracy over the years. I wish we had and more the time. And the failure to Honorable, do the I wish we had more time, but yes. we, we really have to go now. And I well, have to thank fortunate. you. I have to thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on this program at this time. Thank you so much for coming on. Honorable Patrick Icarelli is a member of the APC and former chairman, House Committee on Power. Summarize the continues with your feedback. Please stay with us.
Well, some uh, mails and messages coming uh, through from uh, Joshua. Thanks. We're well, talking about Nigeria security architecture. Says uh, our Nigeria security architecture should be totally reviewed and overhauled. Uh, he thinks somebody somewhere is compromised. If not, why? Where are they getting the weapons? How do they smuggle them? What has the custom immigration and others done? to block their source of supply. All right, this next one is from uh, Gabriel Entekome. It's about tackling Boko Haram specifically. It says, why are the supply lines and channels of Boko Haram not being considered for crippling? My thought from the onset. And Zimo again says on the same issue, do we have enough troops to man virtually all communities in the Northeast or Northwest? Have we also asked ourselves this pertinent question? What is the life of a Nigerian soldier or any other Nigerian worth? Are these soldiers well motivated? Questions, questions, questions. And uh, this one is from Ayodele Olutoye, who is also talking about security. He says, sacking the chief of staff, the chiefs of staff, isn't the solution to solving the insurgency. Are those taken over from them? not going to be hand-folded also, and will there be a total encouragement and morale for them to engage? It's just politics playing out. All right. Okay, so there you go. Uh, that's the show today. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Uso. I'm Kaede Okikulu. I am Ayo. Makine, have a wonderful day. And I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Thank you.